baseball card business I ran up uh, till I was 19. I sold the company for a million dollars at 19. At 19? Cash, a million cash. Yep. That was my opportunity to show the world that Darren Prince was somebody. What, and what, what drove you? I mean, because most 14 year olds, especially back then, you know, now there's a push towards entrepreneurship with social yeah. media and awareness to it. What at that age was pushing you to get money, hustle, make it happen? I, mean, I always had a hustle. I mean, at 12 years old, I used to buy juicy fruit Wrigley's and big red uh, gum. They used to come in a, in, a, in a plastic strip, 10 packs for 99 cents, and I would sell them for a quarter. Yeah. So I would two and a half times my, my money, and yeah. all the kids at school would buy them from me. Yeah. Um, literally 12, 13 years old. So when I saw the card market value, there wasn't Beckett, which people are aware of today, it was a company called CCP, Current Card Price Guide, it was a newspaper, like mm -hmm. the Wall Street Journal, once a week. I would get so excited when he came in the mail because I would see a card went up from $5 to 10 to 15 to 100. And I, I just knew at some point that there's gotta be a way to start selling these things. And uh, you know, when I, I got ready for the show, it's up at 5 a.m. that morning, and the show didn't even start till 10. <laughs> it was like going to a Little League game or a soccer game, yeah. but even bigger. Um, Probably felt like the World Series to you yeah. at that time, or the yep. Super Bowl. And yeah. uh, it was a family affair. My dad came, my mother came, my grandmother, uh, Francis came, and something came alive in me in that room. You know, I, I, I felt like a rock star for was the that first time in my life. Was it, yeah, I was gonna say, was that the first time where you picked on, or were you, did you have friends? I was verbally bullied and, and, and mentally teased, you know, being called an idiot, you know, the, the, you know, I hate using the R word, but R only, or the classrooms I was in, and you know, you think it's funny and whatnot, but it, it, it goes somewhere in your core in those developmental years, and right. so that really just pushed me to be like, you know what, I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show people that uh, I'm somebody. And I made over $1,000 that first Sunday afternoon. No at way. 14. So I came <laughs> home with this bag of cash. I bought, I sold, I <laughs> traded. I, I, I did amazing trades that made my collection worth even more. And the light bulb went on and literally every weekend there were shows. But what was amazing when I got home that night um, and, and I was flying, eventually I crashed. I felt like that loser kid in the back of the row at school. And I couldn't figure out why until drugs came into my life. So how long did you run that? How long did you? Uh, the baseball card business I ran uh, till I was 19. I sold the company for a million dollars at 19. At 19? Cash, a million cash. Yep. Okay, how much were you making? Because I remember you told me at like 16, you were making 300 grand a month or something? Yeah, uh, I, was, I was making about four or 500,000 a year. A um, year? Yeah, selling, uh, selling cards. Can you, can you just zoom in on that? Because I'm sure there's people listening and you know the craze of cards has come back, yep. as I'm sure you know. Bigger than ever. I'm, I'm yeah. big time into it and buying yeah. them like crazy. So can you kind of zoom in and just talk about like the numbers, just so somebody on a practical level could understand the model? So you took yeah. some cards and how did you flip it? So, so, so basically what happened, you know, back then in the 80s, the hot players were Conseco, McGuire, Don Manley, Daryl Strawberry, Tony Gwynn, Wade Boggs, Ricky Henderson. But I went vintage because that's where the real money was. So what happened was at these shows, I would- It's so meet, funny at 14 you were thinking like I, I, I would, well, yeah. I would trade my friends, by the way, yeah. the new players that they liked. Yeah. For these guys they never heard of, Joe DiMaggio, Babe Ruth, and Mickey Mantle that they got from their fathers and grandfathers because they didn't care about old, smelly, stinky cards. Smart, they wanted yeah. the new players. I cared about the money. Yeah. So go ahead, take my Don Maddenings and Waybox and Daryl Strawberry. I'll take your Babe Ruth and your Mickey Mantles. Yeah, and that's smart. how the collection got up there so high. Very smart. So um, then I had these stockbrokers. I was the first kid like anywhere, most of their parents, my, my friend's parents didn't have it. I had a cell phone, but Bell Atlantic was the name of the company. <laughs> and it was this big metal battery pack with this leather case and a rubber antenna. And I had to put a metal antenna on the outside of my car so it worked and it was $3 a minute back then because it was unheard of to have a cell phone. So in between class, I would pick up the phone and I would call people who were all stockbrokers. Yeah. Um, even Keith Olbermann from ESPN was a client of mine at 16 years old and he's a big card collector. And yeah. you know, these guys were just fanatic about it. Hey Darren, if you find a beautiful Mickey Mantle rookie, I'm interested. I said, okay, what's your budget? You know, 7,000, I you know, pick the card up for five, 5,500, I flip it at 15, 20% and that was my job for, yeah. you know, five, six years, I was, I was like the guy that everybody came to to scout out the best condition cards that they wanted. So you're making half a million bucks a year before you graduated high school? Yep. 
And then you sell the company at 19 for how much? I sold it for a million, which was the inventory in the mailing list. Thank you so much for enjoying this video. And if you found this content valuable, uplifting, and inspiring to take your life and your business to the next level, then I have some exciting news for you. Because the Passionate Few Academy officially launched our brand new on-demand training that you can access absolutely free at www.tpfacademy.com. Dot com right there you'll learn the number one way to grow your personal brand or business brand online fast the same way i've learned from interviewing some of the most successful people on the planet right here on the show who've done exactly that so again don't forget to check it out www.tpfacademy.com i promise you you'll be blown away and also don't forget there's three ways you can connect with me further number one you can text me absolutely free at the number on the screen right now and send me your most pressing life business or branding question and i'll get back to you as soon as i can Number two, if you'd like to be interviewed on the show, you can actually apply right now in the description below and apply to share your incredible story, brand, or business right here with an audience of potentially millions of people the same way we've helped experts, entrepreneurs, and authors just like you. And don't forget, that opportunity comes with the ability to partner with us and help feed one million people through our partnership with Feeding America. Again, you can click the link in the description below titled Interview Application to find out more. And last but not least, number three, if you'd like to get consulting from our team and work with you to help you grow your personal brand or business brand, no matter what industry you're in, we can do that by simply filling out the questionnaire in the description below titled Consulting Application. And if our team thinks that you'd be a great fit, who knows, you may just be invited to work with us to help you take your business to the next level. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for enjoying this video. Make sure to smash that subscribe button, turn on post notifications so you never miss an episode. And until next time, live strong, live with passion, and I'll see you in the next inspiring video.